We are at Albert Park in Oakland, the Harbor City of Oakland, and I'm here with John Harvey, the CEO of Southern Photonics Optica Corporate Member. Hello, John. Hi. So, one mm -hmm. of the reasons why I came here was for me to understand a bit what New Zealand does in photonics. What does New Zealand bring to the world of photonics? Well, I think um, despite the fact that we would like to use photonics a lot more locally. The, the big successes in photonics have been in, in companies which have grown to export. So the market is, is offshore for specialized products. We make lasers. There are companies who like uh, Quantify Photonics who um, are a, a leader in coherent optical communications. But this is a very specialized market and uh, all of their customers are overseas as well. So how do you match the, the needs of New Zealand as a country, the societal needs of New Zealand as a country, with what photonic solutions can do? Well, I think we're, we're still struggling with that a little bit, but because New Zealand is an agricultural country, the big opportunities for us would be to leverage photonic technologies to make agriculture more efficient, to reduce the environmental impact of agriculture, and to make food production more, more efficient. In many different uh, events, I have seen a very strong cooperation between New Zealand and Australia. How important is to have this very good relation in the photonic industry between New Zealand and Australia? Well, I think that's, that's crucial and it's uh, exemplified by the Australian New Zealand Optical Society, which links everybody working in the photonics sector uh, across the whole region. And if you actually look at the size of the industry, uh, the photonics industry in New Zealand is about one-fifth of the total contribution and that's about the same as the state of Australia. So in, in some ways you can consider New Zealand as um, just another state of Australia, but of course New Zealanders wouldn't see it that way. We're separate countries. <laughs> in 2020, together with Simon Paul and John Lincoln, you generated a document that was mapping the ecosystem of photonics in New Zealand and in Australia. And in that document, it was written that in New Zealand there are 100 companies active in photonics and the market was $1.2 billion, New Zealand dollars. Well, it's, it's interesting actually because uh, the wine industry in New Zealand has uh, only surpassed a billion dollars a few years ago and everybody's heard of the wine industry yeah. but nobody. <laughs> Uh, has heard of photonics and I think to a certain extent this is true around the world but it's particularly true in New Zealand where um, even the manufacturing industries are not well known politically so it is a big it's a big message but and we keep pushing it but, uh, and indeed I was just talking to Simon Poole a couple of weeks ago and um, we're planning to update the database and reinforce the message uh, next year. What kind of input do you need from the companies in this area for you to deliver this next generation document? I think despite the fact that we made the best effort we could in 2019, I think we still missed a lot of companies that use photonics and could contribute to the data and could contribute to the, to the number, which is what politicians look at, the size of the industry. So uh, the reason to do it again is to quantify the growth of the industry, but hopefully we'll also identify those companies that we missed last time who are active in photonics or who, for whom photonics is a crucial part of their operation. The whole world is looking now at the CHIPS Act as the semiconductor industry needed to be sovereign and be manufactured on site. What does New Zealand have to say about this? I think New Zealand is... Uh, such a small country that it's unlikely that there will ever be significant investment like that. On the other hand, in Australia, it's a different matter. The, the idea of a sovereign capability in Australia is, is very much a current topic um, of political importance. And we're starting to see um, an increased interest in getting more and more photonic manufacturing onshore within Australia and New Zealand. Do we need a joint roadmap for all the companies to develop and move into the same direction? I think a roadmap would be useful. I, I think this is something that the Australian New Zealand Optical Society uh, can take a lead on in trying to, in, to help to spread the political message and to generate a roadmap with the help, of course, of the companies themselves. From Albert Park in Auckland, this was John Harvey and Jose Pozo.